Hello, I'm Andrew Fryer, and in part three of my series on Windows Server Core and SQL Server, I've configured my Server Core virtual machine, and I'm about ready to start thinking about installing SQL Server. As part of the configuration I did in my previous video, one of the things I did was turn on the .NET framework, and that's essential for SQL Server. But with SQL Server Denali, the dependency is on the .NET framework version 4. And before I can install that, I actually need to apply Service Pack 1 to this Server Core machine. And there are special downloads for that, and I'm putting up the links as I do this. I've got an ISO with Service Pack 1 on, and so I can just go to Insert Disk here and browse to that Service Pack 1 there. And when I do that and hit DIR, you can see that I've got set up there, and I can just run that. Click Next, set the license terms, and I'll let that go. I'll cut the video to keep this brief. The virtual machine I'm running on has two virtual hard disks. One was created uh, as part of the setup of the virtual machine, and the other one I'd already created and put a load of useful, useful stuff on. And I did that on my physical machine by going to Create VHD in a Partition Manager, and then formatting that and then copying on the files I needed. So I've got this D drive, and if we have a look at that, you can see I've got the .NET Framework 4 there, the middle file there. And that's going to put the .NET Framework 4 onto um, Server Core, specifically designed for this, as opposed to coming down through Update. And moreover, what it's going to do is it's going to overwrite the fact that I've got the .NET Framework 3 installed, and thereby make sure that we've got all the prereqs in place to install SQL Server. Again, I'm going to cut the video because this is rather boring. OK, that's finished. Before I actually install SQL Server, there's just a couple of things I want to do. The first of these is to open up port 1433 on the firewall to allow SQL Server to be accessed remotely. And to do that, I'm going to use NetSH. Go into the firewall settings, and then I've got this command to actually open the port. And that's done. Finally, I'm going to take a snapshot of this virtual machine because in part four, I want to do something very, very different with SQL Server, which I'll be coming back to. So I'm just going to go to Hyper-V Manager here and snapshot Denali Core. This is a really good idea if you're doing lots of work on VM, so you can roll back to a particular point in time. Just rename it. And now I'm ready to install SQL Server itself. And I just want to show you the command for that before I actually do that. So I'm just going to open Notepad here. And I've got a file with the command line installed already in it. This is a nice clean layer of what I'm actually going to run as a command line for SQL Server. It won't accept it like that, but that's just so you can read it. So I need to declare the instance name, what features I'm going to install, I'm going to give it all the accounts, so you can see what my accounts are. And finally, I'm actually going to turn on TCP protocol by default as part of the install. So I've just got that on one line here. I'm just going to copy it and paste it. And off it goes. So that's SQL Server Denali installed on the server core. I guess you don't believe me, so I better dive out to another virtual machine and see if we can connect to it. I've got a Windows 7 machine here. And I've got Management Studio on it.
and there it is. So a little bit of working to do but it is possible to get SQL Server Denali now running on server core and that's a good thing from a patching, security, high availability point of view. In my next video I want to have a look at image preparation and server core so that we can build a template virtual machine and thus spin up more copies of this um, very quickly and easily but in such a way as that they can join the domain and be good citizens maybe for um, clustering and some other things that we might want to do.